what so proudly we held at the twilight's last bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free? And the home of the brave. You may be seated. Again, good afternoon, Security Director uh, Jackson, all of our guests, and all of our veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TSA's Veterans Day Awards Ceremony as we honor all of our veterans today. With this, with this being a ceremony for our veterans, I would like to recognize today as being the 30th anniversary of Desert Storm. We would also like to recognize all of our veterans for their sacrifice and their hard work. Uh, as we call out the different branches of service, um, I would like to recognize all of the different branches of service with a round of applause. So as I call out the different branches of service, um, if we could give them a round of applause as we go through them, I would greatly appreciate that. So for those of you who have served in the Army, let's give them a round of applause. And for those of you who have served in the Navy, let's give them a round of the Air Force. Let's give them a round of applause. And if we have any Space Force Guardians among us, let's give them a round of applause as well. Today makes, marks a special day. The United States Marine Corps stab, was established on November 10th, 1775. Today is the United States Marine Corps' 246th birthday. Let's give all of our Marines a round of applause. I also would like to say that we are all we all honor the sacrifices that the Marines have made and we also wish for a very successful future for the Marine Corps. So I just want to say one last time, happy birthday to all the Marines. So at this time I would like to take a little time and talk about the history of Veterans Day. Um, <clears throat> World War I was known as the time of the Great War, officially ended when the Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919. However, fighting ceased months earlier when armistice between Allied nations and Germany went into, <clears throat> I'm sorry, went, went into effect on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. For that reason, 
November 11th, 1918 was generally regarded as the end of the war to end all wars. To us in America, the reflections of Armitage Day will be filled with solemn pride and the heroism of those who died in the country's service and gratitude. For the victory, both because the thing from which it has freed us, because of the opportunity it has given America to grow, to show her sympathy with peace, justice, and the Council of Nations. The original concept for the celebration of Armitage Day was observed as parades, uh, a time for meetings, a time for businesses to cease, when it was primarily set to honor veterans of World War I. But in 1954, World War II required the greatest mobilization of soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen in nation's history. On June 1, 1954, November 11th, that became the day that we honored American veterans of all wars, changing Armitage Day to Veterans Day. So the significance of Veterans Day is not only just so that the day can be observed, it is also a time where we want to bring attention to the importance of Veterans Day, the celebration to honor American veterans for their patriotism, their love of country, and their willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. At this time, I would like to introduce our TSA Administrator, Administrator Pukoski. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. And um, I, let me say at the very outset, too, how much I appreciate the work that everyone has done to, uh, to make this ceremony a reality today. I mean, I think the backdrop looks terrific. We now have the sixth military service represented um, to my left, to your right. Uh, I think it's just a very appropriate setting for us to, um, to think about Veterans Day of 2021. I'd also like to recognize the, um, the Dulles uh, honor Guard. I mean, they do a terrific job. Um, really professional. Adds a lot of decorum to a ceremony. This is Veterans Day. We're honoring folks that served in the U.S. military and really appropriate to have such a professional honor guard to open up our ceremony. And Marcus, um, the national anthem. Uh, you sing the national anthem with such pride and enthusiasm. Um, it's really remarkable and, and that's just a great way um, to get us started uh, and so I appreciate your presence here today, and, and you've done this a number of times. Um, and uh, you should take as a, as a high compliment that we keep asking you back because you're so good at it. So thank you uh, very much. You know, today we, um, we honor American veterans for, for their service, um, for their patriotism, and for their love of this country. And it's particularly appropriate in TSA that we have a special ceremony for Veterans Day because nearly one-fifth of our workforce are veterans. Um, and and you know, if you think about it, it makes an awful lot of sense why that's the case. I mean, if you look at the, the core values of each one of the military services, now six, and the core values of TSA of integrity, respect, and commitment, there's almost complete alignment between the core values that we all had instilled in us when we went through uh, either boot camp or, or a commissioning program uh, in the military services, and it's very similar here in TSA. Uh, in TSA, we, we, we always talk about service above self. And when you're serving in the military, the very same thing, service above self. Um, military members bring both leadership and followership skills um, to this agency. And I, I would emphasize the latter as being particularly important. I mean, leadership is always at the top, but, but followership is very important too. You need to know how to be a good follower and how to support uh, the efforts of your team. Uh, in the military, you have mission focus and you have commitment um, to achieve the objectives uh, that you've been given to achieve. And we have the very same here in TSA. And then finally, TSA is a very large operating agency in this government. We are a national security agency. Uh, we have a critical role in the security of this country. Uh, we base our operations on intelligence and, uh, and we focus on risk mitigation, the very same things that folks in uniform do, uh, that we all did, uh, and, and that is being done um, today as well. It's also no surprise, just came out uh, last couple of days that 
TSA has been named this year as one of the top 10 employers for in our country um, for veterans. Um, it's just a recognition that, hey, one-fifth of our workforce are veterans, the alignment that I just talked about. Uh, but an important part of this is that uh, when they also named TSA as one of the top 10, they uh, indicated, hey, you know, how, wh what kinds of, of things align to military service in some of these other agencies and some of these other com companies. But then they also had a, a piece in there that talked about, hey, after 12 months, what percentage of the people that came in are still serving uh, in their agency or in their, in their company? And for TSA, the number was 85%. So for veterans that came into TSA in 2020, 85% were serving in 2021, which is notably higher um, than, than what we see uh, from, from individuals who are not uh, veterans when they come into TSA. Um, I'd just like to reflect too, we asked um, a couple of our veterans what they would want to say um, to uh, people assembled here in TSA headquarters and people who are viewing this uh, virtually, and I'll, and I'll highlight uh, both of them. The first is uh, STSO Rich Damron, who's from Missoula International Airport in the great state of Montana. Uh, Rich has been with TSA since 2002, as a number of you have been uh, with this agency from the very beginnings uh, of our being. He's a member of the Montana National Guard, and he says, quote, members of the military are, are ideal hires for TSA because they have relevant experience, attention to detail, flexibility, and are good at dealing with change, unquote. And he goes on to say, my fellow TSOs are great people. We joined TSA for the same reason that many people also join the military, to keep our country safe. And then I would, would uh, reflect on one of our federal security directors, Steve Wood, who's the federal security director for the state of Tennessee. Uh, Stephen is a 24-year military veteran, uh, colonel in the U.S. Army. He was the J-3 at Joint Command Network Warfare at the National Security Agency. So the J-3 is the head of operations uh, for this joint command. He sees similarities between being a veteran and working for TSA. And he says, I quote, understanding the opportunities you can create from experience and skills you gained and lessons you learned during service. You can apply that same commitment to mission and continue to protect American values and defend the nation at TSA. Um, as was mentioned, uh, for those TSA veterans who have worn the eagle and the globe, uh, the Marine Corps was founded, um, as Ron uh, indicated, on the 10th of November, 1775, um, so 246 years ago. Um, and it's very appropriate, and we didn't stage it this way, that the Marine Corps flag is immediately behind me. Um, but I, you know, I watched the uh, 246th birthday message from the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and very apropos to TSA, is one of the things he uh, highlighted was the events of 9-11 and how that focused Marine Corps operations uh, for the ensuing 20 years. Um, so to all of our Marine Corps veterans, uh, Semper Fidelis. Uh, in TSA, we have a number of programs for veterans, really great pro programs. Uh, first is the Veterans Preference During Hiring. Um, then we have Disabled Veteran Leave, which supports veterans uh, undergoing medical treatment for disabilities that they incurred uh, during their service to our country. Um, they can count military service for leave and retirement benefits, and veterans can also benefit from the TSA CARES program, which is just a terrific program for uh, individuals who um, have greater difficulty uh, going through our screening process than other people might have. And uh, this program has assisted about 20,000 people per year, uh, many of them military veterans. We also um, assist in honor flights. Uh, we facilitate the screening for veterans participating in honor flights to visit the war memorials here in Washington, D.C. Um, there's great pride. I've, I've been in many airports where, uh, you know, first thing I hear as I walk into the airport and go through screening is, um, hey, sir, we have an honor flight uh, arriving today. And, and what, um, what happens is um, that you know, we, we assist through screening, uh, we greet the flight when it lands, uh, generally with an honor guard and oftentimes with the singing of the national anthem. And as you know, in airports, uh, certainly prior to the pandemic and actually now, if you travel now, a lot of people are in the terminals and people just observe that going on, uh, reflect on it, and usually break out into a round of applause for the veterans coming off the plane. And that's, that's a great welcome. And these are veterans who um, uh, risk their lives in defense of this country. And to come in to see the memorials here in Washington, D.C., and be greeted that way and have it arranged um, by TSA is incredibly appropriate. And I really appreciate 
uh, the work that everyone's done on those honor flights because it has a huge impact. Um, we have a wonderful uh, guest speaker here today, uh, one of our federal security directors, uh, Kim Jackson, who is a retired general officer as well. And um, he is the federal security director for the state of Mississippi. And importantly, uh, he's based at JAN. Uh, it's, one of the, it's the ICAO code uh, for Jackson, Mississippi Airport. Uh, it's also called Medgar Wiley Evers International Airport. And for those of you who may not remember, Medgar Evers was a civil rights activist. He was the uh, Mississippi Field Secretary for the NAACP and a World War II Army veteran. Uh, he was tragically assassinated in 1963, for those of us who can remember back to 1963 and what was going on in this country at that time, by a member of the White Citizens Council in Jackson. And he's buried here in Washington at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, Federal Security Director Kim Jackson has uh, been a, an exemplary leader uh, in TSA. Uh, he has also been a member of our Inclusion Action Committee. It's a committee we formed um, to look at um, diversity, equity, and inclusion issues in this agency. He devoted a lot of time to that effort. Uh, their report is a, is a terrific report. It'll be published very soon. And so, Kim, I appreciate your work on that report. I appreciate you traveling up here to Washington, D.C. to participate in the ceremony. And, and Ron will introduce you in, in just a minute. But let me close by honoring our veterans, by thanking our veterans for their service, uh, for their sacrifice, and by also recognizing the families of veterans. And families, you know, spouses, children of veterans, um, and certainly parents uh, of veterans uh, as well, because, you know, veterans' service impacts everybody in a veteran's family. And so I would ask everybody um, to please pause tomorrow. Uh, that is the 11th day of the 11th month, as you, as you indicated. Uh, and pause at the 11th hour, um, because that is when the armistice with Germany went into effect, ending, and ending World War I in 1918. And when you do that, tomorrow at 11, just reflect on the service of our veterans. Just think about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a national holiday, fortunately, in the United States, and I just think it's important that, you know, a holiday is not just a holiday. This is an important holiday, like they all are. And we just ought to think about, um, during that day, what it means and, and why we are acknowledging uh, the service of our veterans. So with that, uh, thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to you, Ron, uh, to continue with the ceremony. I didn't shuffle any of your notes here, so you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Administrator Krasky. Uh Well, um, he has taking all of the information I was going to say about Federal Security Director Mr. Uh, Jackson, but uh, he did leave out one thing. Uh, Federal Security Director uh, Kim Jackson became the FSD on November 1st, 2019. He's responsible for screening operations at six federalized airports. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you would help me in welcoming Federal Security Director Kim Jackson. Thanks, Ron, and thanks everybody for attending. And good afternoon, and thank you, Administrator Pekoski, for the opportunity to speak today for this, at this introduction of Veterans Day. I'm proud to be among the ranks of the brave men and women who serve our country by protecting its freedom and democracy. So the the title of my speech today is why did I serve? These times, like so many others in our nation history, are riddled with war, strife, injustice, hunger, and disease across the globe. There is added challenge of change and fear in the midst of our current pandemic. Valiant men and women have answered the call to train hard, sacrifice often, and perform under pressure whenever and wherever they are needed. But also their families who carry the burden and the honor of supporting their loved ones. They make freedom and victory possible. We honor those who serve, those who have served, and those who gave the full measure of devotion their lives. Their service make a difference, not only as a 
at home, but, but all over the globe. They serve in difficult conditions as, as the eyes of the world are often on them. So I salute veterans who have chosen to serve multiple times, those who have served in the armed forces, and they now serve with TSA, as the administrator stated, one-fifth of TSA workforce across the nation are veterans. I'm proud to salute the 52 veterans who serve in my home state of Mississippi. What a privilege it is to have another opportunity to serve and protect people, commerce, and community. So allow me to share this story of why I serve. I served, so over my past 33 year career in the United States Army, I served shoulder to shoulder with thousands of soldiers at home and abroad, so from Mississippi to Baghdad. I recall answering my, I, I recall answering my call to serve in March 1979, just two months after I graduated early from high school. I was asked I was asking myself those proverbial questions. What's next for me? What is my purpose in life? As I look around my community, low socioeconomic area, most everyone like me and my family were poor in material things, but rich in culture. Caring and connection in the community there were some educated professionals like teachers, like doctors, and some affluent business owners. I had an interest in law enforcement, but the police, so I didn't consider that as a realistic option for me. I admitted that I was challenged by the thoughts that I wasn't good enough. I didn't consider myself equal to those outside of my community. So my cousin suggested that I join the Army National Guard as a private. Since I admired the way my community welcomed and honored black soldiers who returned home from the Vietnam War, I consider that, that I too could do something honorable. There was one soldier who stood out in my mind a Marine Corps officer. I knew that I could serve my country, my community, and my family. I could make them proud of me, so I enlisted into the National Guard. A few weeks later, I was off the basic training and then my AIT advanced individual training. When I returned home, I had no intentions of going to college, but my strong-willed mother gave me two options. Those options were you either go to work or you go to school. At age 18, I wasn't ready to begin life with full-time work, so I chose to go to a local university. The National Guard paid my tuition. I was recruited into the University Army ROTC program which paid the remainder of my college, which paid, paid the remainder of my college to his expenses. I did well in ROTC, and it put me on, on the path for the next 30 years of my life. While serving in the U.S. Army, I traveled the world, which greatly expanded my limited community view to a broader world view. When you see better, you can do better. The Army gave me direction, training, and skills. I gave the Army my loyalty, duty, and determination. I already had good work ethics. I developed a healthy work ethic. I learned to value myself and my skill, never to underestimate myself, never to put myself above and below anyone else. I noticed that 
there was a lot of smart, capable black soldiers in the Army, but very few black officers. I look for opportunity to learn how to move up, to understand the structure and how things work above my rank. I felt that I was treated unfairly in some instance. I thought other people could have done things differently. It was easy then, but I was determined. I reconciled within myself that if I could make a difference, I would. And I would do the right thing. I wanted to show others what right looks like. Myself. Keep looking for a mentor and always position myself for opportunity. Along the way, I made some good choices and some that was not so good. I also made progress. I served with pride, dignity, and determination. I was rewarded with promotion up to up ranks, and I retired at the rank of Brigadier General. <clears throat> so I noticed the Army had a pyramid structure. At the top, there was very little diversity. I see the same structure at TSA. While there is much diversity in the ranks and the file, members of the agency at the base of the pyramid. There is little diversity at the top tiers. That mirrors what I experienced in the Army. No one should grapple with the question, am I good enough to serve at the top? The answer is unequivocally, yes, you are good enough. Continue to work hard, be diligent, serve with excellence and integrity. Meanwhile, it is up to leaders to ensure that there is a fair, op equitable opportunity given to everyone. I'm proud to serve on the Administrative Inclusion Action Committee. The IAC is a committee of diverse leaders who have worked for over a year to provide the administrator with recommendations on the policy and practice to increase diversity. One of our goals is to directly engage employees to ensure that TSA is a fair and equitable organization built on trusted relationship, mutual respect, and increased communication between leaders, leadership and employees. TSA is making strive in the right direction. I have been honored to serve T in TSA for over the last five years, alongside a thousand of women and men to protect our transportation system. As the FSD in Mississippi, I oversee the screening operation at, air, at airports to ensure that TSA mission is met to keep people and commerce safe in our transportation system. So why do I, why do I choose to serve with TSA? The same reason that I had always been an integral part in the prosperity of our country by protecting people in commerce. <clears throat> like you, I love my country. I believe in the unalienable rights, freedom, privileges that we fight at home, at home and abroad. I marvel at the diversity of our veterans. Regardless of their varied belief, background, ethnicities, personality and skills. They fight for the set of shared ideas. Our armed forces strive on the rich. Our community will embrace the value of diversity and build on each other's strengths. So I believe all of us and we will do better. So I salute today our veterans and thank you for your service and thank you again, Administrator Pekoska, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, FSD from Jackson. Uh, I would like to also take this time um, to note that a lot of our veterans uh, who have served, uh, a lot of them have come home, but a lot of veterans have not come home. And we still have some veterans that are missing in action. Um, and I would like to take this time for a moment of silence that we can dedicate 
to those veterans and the ones that are missing. Thank you so much. I want to thank Administrator Pekoski and uh, FSD Kim Jackson, as well as our guests and all veterans for attending today's program. And we would like to close with the retiring of the colors. Can you guys please stand for the close of retiring of the colors? Here, do a shot. Okay, so I guess they're getting themselves together. Okay, so you guys may be seated. I want you to stand here. You can sit down. Okay, could everyone please stand for the retiring of colors? You may be seated. This concludes our program for today. I want to thank